Jackson. How do you do? Thank you for seeing me. That will be all, Mrs. Hudson. Thank you. Um, won't you take a seat, madam? I won't take much of your time, so I prefer to stand. As you wish. Which one of you is Mr. Holmes? I am Sherlock Holmes. Yes, well, due to the nature of my situation, I would prefer to share it with the fewest possible people. Dr. Watson is a physician as well as my trusted associate. We work together. Uh, dear lady, please have no concern that I Very may... Very well. If I must, then I must. Here is my problem. Well, if it were only my problem, I would bear the shame in private and never speak of it to another person. But since a friend of mine has suffered the identical experience, I know it's my duty to help put a stop to it. And so, let us begin by being totally and completely candid, starting with your name. Jean Samson. Watson, will you please write down these particulars? Must he? He must. Now, your problem. In minute detail, Miss Samson, and from the very beginning, if you please. Well, I work for the family publishing house, and I'm an editor. Perhaps you can understand why I'm reluctant to have anyone take this down. The written word is rather indelible. And, and... transferable, but you must rely upon us to respect your privacy. No one will see Watson's notes except me. All right. To get to the point, I met a man. Ah. It's not as you may think. He was an author. Or, oh, well, he brought in a manuscript which he said he'd written. I read it. It was charmingly done. Memoirs of an English lad brought up in California. It needed a good deal of work, but the core of it was good. The man's name? Robert Mason. His story was about Indians and cowboys and the gold rush. Not original subjects, but nicely treated. We decided to publish it, so I was obliged to work with Robert on a daily basis. And? And we began to see each other socially. He seemed the perfect gentleman, and we got on quite well. And in time, he proposed marriage. And did you accept? Yes. I hadn't expected to marry. I'm educated, enjoying more independence than most women. I'm an only child, so father pinned his hopes for maintaining the family's fortunes on me and... And that's where the shame of it comes in. After our engagement was announced, one day Robert took me to see a house that he'd found, a true honeymoon cottage, and it was perfect, a dream of a place. Then you liked it? I loved it, but can you afford it? Well, when I knew I'd found the girl of my dreams, that's you, Jeannie, I wired to the States for my money. It's in a bank in San Francisco. I have nearly $10,000 there. My goodness. But poor old dad, he got things mixed up somehow, and now I have to sign a release form to authorize the shipment of silver certificates to the Bank of England, and it's apt to take weeks to get here. And I'm afraid I may lose the house if I can't pay the agent. So I hate to bring it up, but, Jean... Yes, dear? Do you suppose your father could advance us the money to put down in the house, just until my money arrives? It'll be just temporary, and this way we can start married life in our own little nest. Well... You can imagine what happened. Father handed Robert a thousand pounds, and that was the last I ever saw or heard from him. The blackguard. And after he disappeared, Father and I drove to the house to see if it was still available, and there was someone else living in it. They said they'd never heard of Robert Mason. Do you have a photograph of him? No. Do you still have his manuscript? Yes. Excellent. I want to see it immediately. Now, what about this friend of yours? Emily Calkins. What happened to her? Almost the same thing. Will you try to help her, too? His name is Peter Sidney. We were to be married in June. His parents live in Canada, and Peter needed the money to pay for their passage to come to the wedding, so I gladly lent him 1,500 pounds. He was only alone, and I never heard from him again. Oh, I feel such a fool. I know. I shall never trust another man again. How did you meet Peter Sidney, Miss Calkins? At the literary circle. What is that? It's a charity. It pays for tutors to teach foreigners and the poor how to read. Emily and I both belong. That's how we met. I take it the members are all rather well-to-do? Well... I wouldn't say well-to-do. Our parents all have money, though. We do have that in common. Holmes took further information from the two women, and then we rode back to Baker Street. I thought he'd find the case of the two jilted women a bit trifling but it turned out to be much more involved than it looked at the outset. Poke up the fire a bit, will you, Watson? That's better. Took a bit of a chill in the cab. Ah, yeah. how are you going to go about solving this one, Holmes? The one piece of evidence available to us is Robert Mason's manuscript. That is where I shall begin. In the late afternoon, we were visited again by Jean Sampson, who brought Holmes the manuscript.